the website and the research. And if you'd like to uh, make a contribution towards this, what we do on this channel, uh, the link's down there below. We're over at uh, JPL's um, studio and we're looking at the recent footage from the Sassini uh, spacecraft that's visited uh, the North Pole of Saturn. What's puzzling that, those people over there at JPL is this hexagon um, pattern that's formed around the North Pole and they're not sure as to whether it is a hurricane or or not. Um, it, you know, I could take this a little bit further, right? Um, first of all, they don't mention the magnetic North Pole, they just say the North Pole. So we know it's the rotational axis that they're looking over and we can see this, um, you know, weird jet stream pattern and it is very strange to get a hexagon pattern forming over the uh, north pole of the planet I think. I think there's more to it and you know you might think oh maybe you shouldn't delve into these things but I, I think it's relevant uh, even if it's just for the um, geometry um, relevance if nothing else. I mean we could be looking equally at a three-dimensional cube if we was to put the other two or three lines on that that's exactly what we would be looking at and the center would be on the corner. The reason why I mention this is because I've seen this a lot on crop circles. I'm going to show you some of the crop circles in a minute and I'll show you some more footage of this uh, unique pattern that's formed over there. But the important point I want to make is that they don't mention anything at all about a magnetic north pole or whether they even know whether there's a magnetic north pole in the center. And I would put money on it that that is what's holding that jet stream in position as is on Earth. But if we look over the top of our planet, and we might as well do that at the jet streams, let's get that up. And what we'll see, first of all, is it looks nothing at all like Saturn's North Pole. And that's because our magnetosphere and magnetic poles have weakened, um, you know, around about 25% of what it should be, say, 40, 50 years ago. And uh, the, the jet streams are not even in the positions they should be. There should be one at 30 degrees, which is your polar jet stream, and one at 60 degrees, which is your subtropical. And just looking over the uh, northern hemisphere, or the North Pole, you can see that they're both intermingled. And I wouldn't have said either one was in the true positions that it should be. I think just before we have a look at some more Sassini um, photographs, you might as well have a look at the jet streams from the equatorial region as of today. So you can see what I'm saying, you know, that there isn't a nice, uh, neat or, you know, wavy as there used to be jet stream around 30 degrees and there's neither the subtropical jet stream around 60 degrees, neither on the northern hemisphere of this planet or on the southern hemisphere of this planet. And just before we leave, we might as well have a look over the Antarctic region or the South Pole uh, to see that that is the case. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at a few more images first of all, before we have a look at some of these crop circles. I know, I know what you're thinking, but just bear with me. I think you'll find it, um, if nothing else, coincidental. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at some of these uh, images then of the North Pole on Saturn. Uh, let's go through a few. What's interesting to me is that it does form this perfect uh, hexagon pattern and there does seem to be this little border pattern around the edge of it and uh, you know what is it that puts up um, you know the system in place to form such a pattern in the first place over a planet covering you know thousands of miles it's very unusual it's got to be one of the most unusual planets in our solar system with its ring in any case Saturn has but then you know just to add even more to the mystery, you get this strange anomaly appearing over the northern hemisphere, you know, over the polar region. So 
So um, let's have a look then at some of these crop circles that I've been talking about because I think there is some uh, significant similarities and I'll point out a few other things as well of interest uh, that I thought was worth mentioning about in this video at least. So let's do that. So let's have a look at some of the similarities in these crop circles with regards to the geometry or geometric shapes that have formed or the shape that has formed on the um, polar region of Saturn. Um, you know, I'm not saying that there's anything connected between the two. I'm just saying that it is unusually uh, similar in nature and the geometry seems to revolve around divisions of 144 and I know that for a fact I've actually um, done some calculations with regards to these patterns now I'm not saying that these are done by UFOs uh, but someone seems to feel that the geometry is of relevance because they go to a lot of work to put these geometric shapes into these fields and some of them are pretty amazing um, you know we've we've heard the professional opinions of people that say that uh, there's no way that these could have been done uh, by humans but you know I'm not gonna put that up for arguments I'll leave that for you to make up your own uh, decisions on but for some reason there is a lot of uh, crop circles that have that hexagon pattern first of all and you know there is a connection between the number 144 uh, you can work it out for yourself the divisions of some of these uh, geometric patterns are also divisions of 144 such as the number 36 times 4 and 72 times 2 uh, you know get the, the get back to the number 144 and I know some of you guys out there that are interested in some of the stuff that we've done with regards to the Bible and Bible numbers that reoccur a lot such as the 144 cubits, the 144,000 people uh, made up of the 12 tribes etc etc you know it's, 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 it's a sort of like a back burner project for me um, because I really believe that whoever um, was writing that book certainly had knowledge of the flare of life pattern and the, geom the geometry within that pattern is again uh, similar to these crop circles and similar to that polar region on the Saturn's North Pole. Now I'm not saying you know that there were there are intelligent life forms out there that are responsible for putting these patterns down on the ground on Earth as a, as a sort of warning sign for us maybe you know it's just a coincidence that we are going through a magnetic reversal and you know that pattern on the north uh, pole region of Saturn is just nothing but a coincidence but you know I'm just sharing this with you I think it's interesting and I think whoever's done these patterns seriously went to a lot of work uh, to do that or it could quite easily be, you know, something else that put them down. And I have an open mind to this simply because of what I've witnessed personally with my own eyes. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, I did mention to you guys the fact that you could look at that pattern as a hexagon or as a three-dimensional um, cube. Now this this pattern here definitely resembles that what I was talking about about the numbers in the one four four. First of all, there are around that cube, right, one hundred and forty four triangles. You can see that it's made up of four sets. The first two sets make up seventy two. The second two sets make up, you know, the one four four. Or each ring consists of thirty six triangles. And you know, I found this uh, very same pattern. A lot of people have overlooked it on an uh, old uh, temple in Osiris in Egypt and you know you can see that this um, flower of life is on one of the well it's on a few of the walls but you can also if you look very closely see that it's got a border pattern made up of these triangles and there is 144 of them now <clears throat> in the center of this um, crop circle you've got lots of cubes 
and the corner one, if you're looking at it as a three-dimensional one, where the star is in the middle, you can see the corner one has been removed and you are able to see the star in the center. So, you know, if we go back, you know, if you have a look at that Sassini uh, photographs, you'll see that there is, you know, a three-dimensional cube and in the center is that circle. You know, I'm just saying that this is a coincidence, especially with the research that goes on on this channel, because we're talking about planetary mechanics, and we're also talking about um, a particular region of that planet, which is the polar regions, because of, in my view, and has been for a long time now, um, you know, a lot of things that make a planet livable um, depend on what's over those polar regions, and more so the magnetic north pole. Now they're saying over the polar region that they're unsure why the jet stream or that hurricane pattern which has formed that hexagon, they're not sure why it is over that region and what's caused it. They've not even mentioned at all that that could be due to um, um, a strong magnetic field uh, of one of its dipoles or polar uh, di you know, one of the uh, magnetic poles of that planet. They've not even mentioned it. You know, or you know, I just find it really strange that they would emit something that they know occurs on this planet and not even mention it at all. It, it's just bizarre. But <clears throat> we've talked about a few things in this video. We've talked about the Bible numbers or the Bible code numbers. There is, believe me, there is a num there is a, a series of numbers that repeat themselves in the Bible. Like we know twelve twelves make up one four four. And there is 12,000 of these tribal members that make up the 144,000 during the times of tribulations. Right? We know that uh, this thing that's going to be descending, which is described as in the Bible as the, as the bride, right, will have a wall uh, 144 cubits. In, in length. What I'm saying to you is for some reason these numbers were put into this book at the specific points at which they were put in the book, I believe, for a, a reference for a later point in time. I think that they knew that at some point in time the people that was, you know, around in that time would figure out what the re relevance of that was. Maybe, I mean, I'm, what I'm not saying here, guys, yeah, is you know it's a serious topic. First of all, the pole shift. New, you know the news is, you know we're talking about a, a real anomaly that's taking place during our point in time. hasn't happened for the last seven hundred eighty thousand years. It's a rare event, and it's an unusual rare event in the fact that it's taken another five hundred thousand years to occur this time round. You know, people are talking right now about the increase in cancer rates. Some people are just putting it off, as to, you know, to say, "Well, there's more people on this planet now than there ever has been." That's true, but you know, with a weakened magnetosphere, it will also mean that there'll be more inbound cosmic rays, which are, if you like, carcinogenic, cancer-causing. So, I mean, th there is talk now, slowly creeping out about the significances of a weakened magnetosphere. It's going to get worse because the magnetosphere is just, deca just decaying as time goes on. I know it isn't going to go, you know, uh, flash, you know, overnight. We're not going to lose the magnetosphere completely. Uh, we are going to get to a point where there is going to be no protection during that magnetic reversal. During, from the research that we've conducted on this channel, um, to the best of my abilities, with what I've had at hand and as you guys know I always make the very most of what I've got or you know I try and uh, do my best with what I've got we know that when it gets into the weak field lines things will increase in pace and move a lot quicker and when they do you know we are going to go through a magnetic reversal and that will mean during that point in time where there is you know no defined north or south pole there will be no magnetosphere either. There will be no protection at all for people on the surface, as well as all the biological life forms or biodiversities that's on the surface as well. And your government have prepared you for this. 
uh, in what way exactly? You know, they've told us, they've told people, and I'm not blaming the actual people that work there, I'm blaming the management in some of these organisations. They have told people that this is a thousand years off, and it's not, it's nowhere near, it. it's a lot shorter than that. It's not a thousand years off like they're saying, it's clearly not, and we're seeing signs now of that pole uh, preparing almost to go into them wheat field lines. We know that for a fact because now the magnetic north pole is deviated off that vector. Well, this is a sign that something's changed, guys. We've seen this happen three times already where it has increased speed, covered more distance over that time, short periods of time. We've seen it go up a gear like three times. Now we've seen it deviate off its vector that it was heading for the last hundred years. We're getting closer to an event happening on this planet. I really believe that. Whether these crop circles are to do with that in some way, I cannot 100% say. All is I can say is that there is a lot of things that if you're open-minded enough, you might think that, yeah, we could be uh, being told here by something or somebody, you know, that, that there is a significant factor with regards to, you know, the poles on other planets in this uh, solar system. And, you know, it has a reference on a lot of other things. But for some reason, you know, they are always showing, the majority of the time, the same ge geometry. Why is that? Why do they always use the same geometry, is what I'm saying. I dare say some people will think that's an Illuminati one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just putting it out there, I just thought, you know, I don't know what that's got to do with these... Um, Maybe she thought it'd be a good idea to have a crop circle on her back. I don't know. But, you know, there is plenty of evidence to support, uh, you know, a very likelihood um, that these mean more than just, you know, pretty patterns in the ground, I think. And I just thought I'd share that with you guys. So I'm going to leave it here. Um, I'll leave it with you guys to ponder. I just thought it was worth mentioning the uh, Sassini spacecraft going over the north pole of, um, you know, Saturn and that unusual pattern that's formed over there. And it just brought my mind back to this, some of this research that I did with regards to these crop circles. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just thought I'd mention some of the um, mathematical numbers, if you like, or the, you know, uh, the formula of what's in the Bible. And, uh, you know, I'll leave it with you to think about it. But they're interesting in any case, and I think they're, they're nice. Whoever's done, you know, whatever has been responsible for putting them there on these fields. Okay, some might say, well, they're, you know, they're reckless. It's actual criminal, uh, what they've done, but, you know, I think, I think it's nice, uh, in some way. So guys, um, I'm gonna leave it with you to think about that. And, you know, uh, I'll say what I usually do. You know, you take care. And as always, uh, before I do leave, there's a link down there if you want to um, contribute towards the channel. Uh, it's not mandatory. Uh, it just helps things, um, you know, keep going on this channel and keep us doing what we're doing. And, uh, you know, there's always a few people. And, you know, I do try my best on every video. At the beginning, the first thing is to thank them people for supporting the channel and the work that we do here. And I hope you, you find it um if nothing, if nothing else, just better than watching some of the garbage on the mainstream media and, and the TV today, you know, it's just, I hope you find it interesting, if nothing else, so I'll leave it there. So link down there, guys, and as always, you take care. Bye for now. Ripped by the period of time in which we're in during this magnetic reversal, and appreciate it for what it is, one of the rarest, uh, most unusual anomalies uh, in humanity yet has failed to capture you know mainstream media's attention on a more regular basis than what it has um, then I think this 
video alone uh, you're going to find very rewarding. Um, what What's happened is, and the reason why this is an, er an alert um, update is because we've stumbled on some information today uh, which is very rare and the reason why I say it's very rare is because usually you only get this information when somebody visits the actual North Pole and it's came from uh, an unlikely source uh, you wouldn't believe it guys uh, but we'll get to that later in, in the video um, so what we're looking at is that green dot on the map uh, the map is provided by the National Centers for the Environmental uh, Information and of course if you know who NOAA are you'll know that the, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration organization uh, so they're providing the map and all the relevant information on the map so if you look at the scale at the bottom you can see the time period which is going to become relevant in a minute and you can also see the longitude and latitude uh, position to where that is if I try and get it into the center there you can see at that uh, left hand screen on the position that it's 86 degrees north um, by 159 degrees west that is important guys because that is where uh, NOAA are stating that in 2015 if you look at the date at the bottom of that chart where the North Pole is right now now I can pull up the historical tracks which just rebut what I've been talking about in previous videos let's do that right now let's get up the historical um, previous tracking of the magnetic North Pole as you can see for quite some period of time now uh, since the 1900s it's been tracking almost on a perfect vector easterly towards Siberia but what you'll notice is that if we're at 2015 why have NOAA included the next few dots and not only that why did NOAA include the dots but also show the magnetic North Pole slowing down when we know that is not the nature of the magnetic north pole at the moment it has been increasing in speed exponentially and so those dots should be getting further and further away now I've got the GPS uh, coordinates of each pin that you see there and I've plotted them into Google Earth and I've showed you many times but what I want to show you something in this video is something very bizarre and unexpected and came about unexpectedly really uh, uh, today uh, this morning and I could not believe my luck because not only has somebody actually gone on to the North Pole but they went to almost to the exact well uh, as, as good as you could get because anyone that tries to track the North Pole and position it uh, perfectly 90 degrees should know it's not an easy job so um, even plotting these uh, coordinates on you know, onto Google Earth uh, is very finicky because as soon as you go over 90 degrees then the heading changes uh, in other words if you're looking at the compass it goes up straight away upside down and so you know it doesn't matter whether you uh, go diagonal one way or the other or left right up and down it's very difficult when you're trying to get a highly accurate position for the North Pole so what's my beef then what's what's so important about this video well it turns out from the position that these people have uh, tracked it to it's off course from the line that you've seen and uh, you, you know first of all what I want to show you right is that NOAA have been forecasting only where the magnetic North Pole is and not actually taking measurements and that's going to become apparent very later on in this video now you would think an organization funded by taxpayers so you know how they treat taxpayers money with very little consideration and care you would think that they would actually not provide a forecast but actually if somebody else can go out to the North Pole in the manner in which the results have come to me then why couldn't they have done that why haven't they updated the um, you know historical mag magnetic um, poles uh, as I'm about to later on in this video so they're forecasting the reason why I know the forecasting because I can just go up the dates if you just pay attention to the 2015 you'll see that as I go up the dates uh, the new once it uploads the new position of the North Pole 
uh, comes in. Now, how can they have 2016's position if they're not forecasting? How can they have 2017, 2018, 2019, up to 2020? It's simply because they're forecasting. Now, how can they forecast that it's first of all going to slow down? And here's, here's the big thing, right? According to the latest information that I've been able to obtain, and that was from somebody that actually has gone out to the ice uh, last uh, year in June 2014, um, it's no longer tracking in an easterly vector. And the reason why I think that is is because the magnet magnetosphere is actually weakening now. And, you know, that, po that pole can be wandering pretty much anywhere. And, you know, it'll be interesting now because this, this does really throw a spanner into the works because, you know, we was hoping that just one magnetometer would be enough to keep a track on this because we, we sort of like knew in which direction it was tracking easterly. So one magnetometer on a heading would have told us that. But no, we did anticipate um, setting up another magnetometer in Virginia, which was around 4,500 miles away. I'm 4,000. 500 miles away from the actual magnetic uh, pole so you we'd get like two lines intercrossing and where they intercross would give us a good position of where the magnetic pole was that's still going to be the case and uh, you know that's um, you know we're in progress of that right now I'm just waiting for the um, voltage boost uh, regulator to come in so that, you know I can complete the um, you know the magnetometer that I'm building right now to do that so once we get the first one built then it's a matter of knocking up the second one getting that shipped over to the United States and we're going to need it now because I'm going to show you in the next part of this video that the pole is tracking south and not by a small amount either guys uh, I think you're going to be shocked and I think the reason why that is as I say is because um, you know the, the magnetosphere is weakening now to a point where things are starting to, uh, you know, become unpredictable. Now, it's important that I mention this: that those white boxes now that I've just included, right, are observed pole locations, which means people have actually gone out there and observed from that position. Now, I believe that uh, one, well I know that one person that used to do it was Larry Newt from the Canadian Geological Survey and uh, he was no longer able to do that because uh, the migrating pole was going that far that his twin engine otter aircraft that he used to land on the ice with as um, it, it's run out of range basically it can no longer fly there and back even with you know I suppose extra cans of fuel to get him out there um, so it became um, unviable for people to get out there on the ice. But as you can see, those little yellow square boxes that I've put up there are the last lo known locations of where people actually have. We're going to put another one on there, and we're going to put one on from 2014, uh, in the middle of the year, uh, June, from June 2014. Now, in the... Um, you know the uh, where the, don't know the technical term. I do know the technical term, but I can't think of it at the moment. But we're going to have a look at the captain's um, GPS uh, as he gets closer to the North Pole. Uh, I'm going to show you the readings for that uh, from the bridge. That's the word I was looking for. So we're going to see not just the uh, 90 degrees north of the new position. We're also going to see that it's date time stamped, and that's you know, massively important to getting and obtaining accurate information. So we can say that uh, we have, you know, a legitimate uh, positioning of the North Pole where somebody has actually observed it from that location. And, you know, the last time this happened was in 2004. So, you know, without further ado, guys, let's get into how I obtain this information. First of all, it was a YouTube video, and it was a Russian nuclear icebreaker ship that now, believe it or not, guys, if you want to, you can book, um, you know, a, a, or reserve a place on this boat and go to the North Pole yourself. So, having found now this icebreaker ship that goes out to the North Pole regularly with passengers on board that want to go to the top of the Earth, 
um, or 90 degrees, you know, we're just we're just going to uh, tag onto the channel and uh, you know follow it year after year, and we're going to get uh, not just forecasted uh, positioning, but we're going to get at least uh, you know at the least uh, ground observations of where the magnetic north pole is. Now I'm going to show you uh, first of all in the next video the ship that goes out there, and then secondly I'm going to show you where I've plotted these positions on Google Earth so that we can see the variation uh, in which it's deviated from uh, that um, present course that it's been following at least up till 2007 um, or maybe shortly after that. Let's get on with that so that we can do this thing guys. So here we are guys. Uh, this is the Victory. It's uh, a unique uh, Russian vessel. Uh, it's been in service I believe 50 years and it's a nuclear powered icebreaker and we're looking at the GPS um, on board the ship as you can see 90 degrees north and 17 degrees east and the date at which it was uh, making this um, voyage was on the 25th of June 2014 even there one minute past six unbelievable you know it's unbelievable where you find this information and you know Noah must have been aware surely that somebody had been going over the North Pole um, you know and if not you know it, it's it's a shame that they've not updated the data um, even recently I'd been speaking to someone at the British Geological Survey and they told me the last time that somebody had been actually there to make uh, you know, a recorded position on the ice was around 2007. So even the, you know, it just seems that us in the West have been totally oblivious to you know this now passenger ship. You can you can literally um, I'll put a link down there so that you can see the link in which you can go on to and book um, you know a, a trip to the North Pole, the exact North Pole. Uh, yeah. It's just unbelievable, isn't it? It's an unbelievable source of information, but uh, it's just by luck that it's came. I mean, you'd never think that a passenger ship would be going over the North Pole. But anyhow, let's have a look, look at the uh, ship that actually does do it, and you'll you'll see them uh, here. I'll just press play. Uh, so you can rent this helicopter as well. Um, by the way, I'm not. Um, <laughs> trying to you know uh, sell tickets to this uh, I mean if I could afford to I, I can imagine this isn't going to be a cheap trip but um, you know I would definitely be one that would be interested in uh, going on that for just the purpose of you know finding out where the magnetic north pole was um, every year so we can keep a log on it because we know how important it is so uh, this this ship goes out there, it's been out there a few times now that I've uh, managed to watch where it's gone out to the North Pole, the captain tries to get it on the spot of where the magnetic North Pole is or 90 degrees if you, as you've seen on his GPS and uh, I don't know how long they've been doing that I suppose this vessel had a commercial purpose at some point um, you know, uh, breaking the ice for other ships to come follow through. But, uh, you know, it's just great that we've been able to obtain the information because now we've got, you know, a location for the magnetic North Pole and it's not forecasted for at least uh, 2014. So let's put this into perspective then for you guys that are interested in where the magnetic North Pole is because if you've been following the videos, you know how important this is. Right, where that P is, right, is the coordinates that the Victor uh, found the North Pole to be at. And as you can see, I've put the date in the 25th of the 6th, 2014. Right, two things stand out um, to me here. First of all, it's no longer tracking in a nice vector easterly towards Siberia anymore. It's somehow deviated more further south and it's done that by if I can just bring in the measuring tool you know show you exactly what we're getting here so uh, if we just uh, measure from the you know 
the vector that it was tracking in if we put that you know somewhere in between these yellow pins that were provided by the GPS coordinates of um, NOAA we'll see that it's not a small deviation as you can see it's 288 miles deviated off course further south and the second thing is if we clear that And measure it from the last time someone actually went to the ice. Let's just clear it. Okay. Which was 2007 to the new position. We can see that it's done around 417 miles in seven years. So 417 divided by 7 equals 59.57 miles a year and that's 20 miles an hour oh sorry 20 miles a year faster than what um, NOAA and the British Geological Survey have put the North Pole migrating at and that's a lot guys so it gives us an idea as to have to forecast from that point on uh, further so we could add from that position now in 2015 if things haven't uh, deteriorated anymore with the position of the North Pole at least another 60 miles onto that and you can see that from that position it leaves us around 500 miles or less actually Let's see if I can get a better one than that around 429 miles to that all important 40 degrees and we know what happens at 40 degrees um, as the as I said in earlier on in the video you know um, I don't think it, it even needs to track in a single vector now easterly I just think it's important that we do um, keep track of where it is um, as best we can now as soon as the magnetometer stations up and running in the UK we'll have a vector as to where the North Pole is with regards to 90 degrees and as soon as we get the one up in Virginia uh, up and running we can have some way of crisscrossing those two headings and it will almost give us a perfect tri triangulation of where the magnetic North Pole is to within a small degree of accuracy um, sorry a, a, yeah, you know, it's going to be very accurate. I have said <coughs> that the magnetometers that we're using, even though you know they are good magnetometers, that they can have an uncertainty to one degree, and we're using three in each station. You know, so there'll be three in the UK, three in Virginia, and uh, you know we're also going to be tracking the one in New Zealand as well. Um, you know, the South Pole that'll be. So, guys, you know, uh, that's where we are. It, you know this is important stuff when you consider what is taking place now you you guys know that I predicted that this magnetic pole wasn't there in the region of the Arctic region uh, for no reason we wouldn't have polar jet streams I believe if it weren't for where the magnetic pole resides right now somewhere over the Arctic region but it's tracking uh, south and easterly right now or south easterly uh, and that means I expect to see the polar jet streams um, if there's a strong pole be in formation but as we know the weakening now I've got something to show you here guys and uh, I think you're going to um, be quite alarmed at what I've got to show you so I'll just uh, draw up the other map so at least you know where it is guys if you check the uh, GPS coordinates down here at the bottom screen before I leave this place you'll see that it's like I said 89.5 is actually where the pin is and you can just see how much things move on the westerly and easterly coordinates uh, but trust me I got it down as, as best as I could in that vicinity uh, to 17 degrees east and 89.5 degrees north which is virtually there if you, if, you, if you don't trust me go on to Google Earth and see how hard it is to put the pin on 90 degrees and 17 degrees east and you'll see for yourselves it's in that vicinity of where I've marked the uh, P so um, let's go and have a look at the other map then uh, the other chart because I've got something important to show you as well with that and that's with regards to the weakening of the magnetosphere and the effects it's having on the polar jet streams right now 
So here we are on the global weather uh, modeling system and most of it is real time. Um, what I want to show you is uh, jet streams and what's happening. So what you're looking at is your subtropical and polar jet streams and as you can see guys they're indistinguishable you can't tell them apart from each other and uh, you know that, that to me is highly shocking um, we've got hot and cool air mixing sporadically uh, across the globe right now and I think it's to do with the weakening magnetosphere I was on a website the other day where uh, scientists were you know not screaming about it but they're saying that in the last six months uh, you know the uh, magnetosphere had noticeably dropped again um, it's very difficult to get information from these organizations I mean we wouldn't have had uh, had it not been for that um, you know Russian um, passenger boat now uh, which is a nuclear icebreaker going over the North Pole we wouldn't have got the data of where the North Pole is accurately as what they did uh, on you know on on the spot uh, if they hadn't have gone across the North Pole themselves uh, in 2014 um, if we look at the SS uh, TA sea surface temperature anomaly or you know as you may know it to be the uh, Almenio uh, I want to point out a couple of areas first uh, we're going to go back on the wind chart and have a look what's happening over this region here but it is a region which is increasing in um, sea surface temperature and also a look at this because these are both going to be affected by the intermingling of the polar and tropical jet streams you know that warm and cold air mixing and you can see from yourself, for yourselves guys this is intensifying uh, if this information is being put out there correctly from NOAA then you can see yourselves it's intensifying and we are looking as other scientists have already stated to a severe El Nino and when comparing the worst one we've ever recorded in 97 it looks like it's going to be worse than that because that was recorded in November time and we're not in November yet we're rapidly approaching it so you know I'm just giving you a heads up uh, this is going to get worse guys and uh, I think we all need to pay attention to it um, we've got now a southerly deviating uh, magnetic pole at this moment in time uh, just look at the uh, yellow air regions these are hotter by the way than the red regions don't ask me why they did it on that scale I mean it just seems more um, logic to put it in red than it is in yellow they did it that way and you know, if you look at the scale you'll see you know yellow is hotter than red so you know. um, if we just go back to uh, the air and wind at surface and then go back we're going to start seeing more of these cyclic movements uh, in these regions of where you know the sea surface temperature is recorded as being hotter so just pay attention to these cyclic events in the future and uh, the region in this place here is where I was telling you another cyclic event uh, could fall into you know producing a hurricane at some point if it hasn't already so um, you know guys you know they're talking about climate chaos well it, you know, you've seen it first hand and um, I can't think why people would not want to um, pass on the information as to where the magnetic north pole is but perhaps they might be thinking well you know there might be a few people out there that put two and two together like I have and understand um, you know what what implications this could have uh, bear this in mind guys you know I'm going to end the video here but bear this in mind this hasn't happened for 780,000 years so just bear that in mind no human uh, historical records of the last time we went through a full magnetic reversal and you've seen the videos in which I've done on Mars 
And what you've got to bear in mind is on average, this used to go through a reversal every 250,000 years. And it's been 780,000 years since the last one. So something happened there. Um, you know, it's, I'll, I'll just put it out there. I'll just, you know, I'll just, what I think. Why not? Is this the end? Is this the last magnetic reversal this Earth goes through? And even if it's not, and scientists cannot deny this, it's showing signs that during this magnetic reversal, when the magnetosphere does collapse, that it will definitely take longer for it to come back up if the magnetic poles do reconfigure at some other point on this planet. Now, when they do, you can expect the Arctic regions to be over those new positions. And not only that, I've said also in a video before, many times in other videos, that the rotational axis is not on the same position as where the Arctic region is and the magnetic North Pole. They're not. They're, they are definitely connected through some planetary mechanics that, you know, I'm trying to work out what's going on myself. But, you know, I don't think that they're all there by coincidence, guys. You know, we could be in for some real unprecedented events during this time. And, you know, as a scientist, you know, I've been slated for saying this, but for me, this is an exciting time. There's lots of stuff to study, but at the same time, I can understand uh, the anxiousness of some people watching these videos thinking, you know, this is really for one happening and it's really serious. And I just hope that, you know, you guys that feel that anxiety, you know, take on board the fact that, you know, you really do need to start putting up some provisions for yourself just in case the worst happens. That can come in many forms. You know, nature has got an unprecedented power. You know, it can throw tidal waves, it can cause earthquakes, it can cause, you know, you to be irradiated by inbound uh, solar radiation without the protection of a magnet, you know, the magnetosphere. So all these things is something you need to think about, guys. You know, we may be only just now coming to the grips of the full reality of what we are facing, but if now we understand, it gives us time to prepare. And there's nothing wrong with that insurance policy of having a bug out bag or a bit of extra food or, you know, some, you know, provisions put up for you and your family at the end of the day. If you're thinking your governments are coming to your rescue, then look no further than what happened in Katrina during those floods. And need I say any more? That will be, the, that will set precedence for how Governments will react during times of national emergency uh, with regard to these incidences caused by these new anomalies. You know, guys, there's a link down there. I mean, some people won't appreciate, you know, the length of time that it takes to put this in, in even the order in which I do. And I've got to admit, it's not probably the most concise manner. And some of these videos do go along uh, for a bit of time. But nevertheless, you know, the information that's collected takes time. Uh, we don't just talk about things anymore on this channel. We're actually building scientific equipment to monitor these things. And we're doing that in the hope that we might be able to give you guys out there a little bit of a heads up. So, you know, it's important. It affects you. Um, if you can afford to make a donation, the link's there, guys. And, you know... I'm just sorry that I have to keep mentioning it. It's, it's a real shame that there's only a few that support this channel uh, financially the way they do. And most of these people make more than one contribution. So, you know, I can only say kudos to those guys. They can pat themselves on the back. You know, um, you know you're doing it not just for yourselves, uh, for, but for others as well. And I know that as well. You know, that's why, you know, I do put the time in and feel that this is worthwhile. Um, I, I really do hope um, you appreciate the fact of why I put an alert on this video, guys. I think it was warranted. Um, you know, it's took an unprecedented uh, detour, to say the least. It's no longer trekking in the vector of just easterly 
We're now getting a South East steadily moving magnetic North Pole, and that's very important. So with that, guys, I'm going to say what I usually do. You know, you take care. Try not to worry, but prepare a little bit at least. And, uh, you know, don't forget to uh, contribute. You know, you're not just uh, helping keeping the information coming for yourselves. You're actually keeping it going for other people as well. Genuine people that can't afford to uh, chip in on a regular basis. So with that, guys, all the best. And what I say, what I usually do, bye for now. really know where to start with videos like this, especially when I've got the organic hand cam out. Um, I just want to run something by some of you. Right, okay. Uh, they reckon that the Egyptians were just slave people that built this monument. Yeah, I, I can't accept that by any means. I think they, they knew something about nature and this universe that we are struggling to grasp. And even why they built these structures so big to last the test of the time. Um, you're going to see where I'm coming from in a minute. But most of us know now that they built them in the star constellation of Orion. If I just show you that the first two pyramids, the Great Pyramid and the second one are perfectly in line. And then the third one is just slightly offline. There's the centre of it. And if we look at the star constellation of Orion, we can see that replication there, the two that are perfectly in line and the one slightly offset. Um, I'm doing my best with the camera so you just have to bear with me. So, you know, I come across, and I've mentioned it before in videos, the Winter Triangle. And the, I, I've got to come straight up uh, clear with you here guys why I'm doing this video is because uh, there's a guy called Richard uh, Feynman who I uh, probably uh, forgot about while studying uh, natural sciences and uh, it was recently um, uh, brought to my intention that uh, when he was, um, I think he won the Nobel Prize uh, for uh, an equation uh, that is to do with the propagation of a, proton, a photon. Now for people that don't know what a photon is, it's a single molecule of light. Yeah, The sun emits millions of photons uh, we see through the ability to compute in our brains photons that you know we're looking at uh, pictures and so forth, so forth in here. But you wouldn't expect uh, the information which I'm about to show you to turn up in the design of the pyramid, let alone any other thing that I'm about to show you. Probably even you would never have had it uh, brought to your attention about the pyramid. So. We can see the star constellation Orion, and we know that the pyramids um, in Cairo were built in that formation, with the slightly one being offset. But if we just cast our eyes slightly to the left of the uh, constellation, and if you're in the UK, by the way, you can see Orion's belt and the constellation Orion uh, in the easterly sky if it's clear right now, and you can also see uh, Betelgeuse, Procyon and Sirius as well, those stars that make up the Winter Triangle. And I don't think it was any coincidence that the pyramid, first of all, was built in the Orion constellation and that it took on the shape of a triangle when you looked at it, or a pyramidal, pyramidal shape. So if we look into what possibly they was trying to draw our attention to, and I do believe that that is what they was trying to do, uh, for many reasons which I'll go into a few of them in this video. Um, if we look at the interior, first of all, of the pyramid, we can see that the Queen's Chamber runs pretty much uh, central, in centre line with the pyramid, and we can see that the King's Chamber is slightly off set. So what I did on the star chart is, as you can see, I drew the areas at which the Queen's uh, chamber was dead center of the pyramid and the king's chamber slightly offset now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see those little dotted lines there because what we're, we're witnessing here is that these king and queen's chamber track the exact position of the galactic equator the center of the equator or the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy and I thought that that cannot be of a coincidence now getting back to um, the propagation of a photon 
being 4%. Uh, if you work out what 4% uh, is, you're going to either come to, I think you can either work it out at 4% or you can work it out at 14.4%, or there's that, that magical number that I always talk about, 144. Now, coincidentally, or maybe not, if we look at the angle of the pyramid in which it was built, there, we'll see that the angle of incline is 51.51 .51 degrees. And if we come down here, uh, you can just see it there, uh, the floor width of the pyramid is 745 feet. Uh, without the casting stones that was added on on there, so let's just put that into the calculator. Uh, so we'll start with the the width of the pyramid, seven four five, uh, divided by fifty one point fifty one degrees, and we see fourteen point four, and that's the propagation uh, of a photon. Um, if you look up uh, Feynman's um, you know, work, you'll come across the video and you'll see that he talks about 4% a lot. He also will show you in his video that where, um, you know, on a sine wave in one of his videos, where exactly that 4% is and it should be taken from, and it's, it's dead centre of a sine wave, and which is what we're looking at when we're looking at the uh, galactic equator. It looks like a big sine wave. Um, the other thing is, you probably think, oh, that could be a coincidence that we've, you know, uh, divided the angle of incline by the, uh, you know, the width of the pyramid, and we've got 14.4 uh, degrees. Or, uh, well, let me just show you that if we, we was talking about a circle on this, uh, 360 take away. 4%, right, if I press the equals, you get 14.4%. It's interesting that, uh, you know, we orbit the sun, and, uh, you know, therefore, if we just use the 360 and take away the 4%, uh, which is the propagation of a proton, a photon, sorry, uh, we get that, that answer, 14.4%. You might think, well, there, there, there is another uh, coincidence, but this is this is one thing that uh, has had me puzzled today. If we get a ruler and we'll just measure that line as best we can, and follow that line to the declination scale, you can see it's not quite 15 uh, positive declination on the side of this star chart. And that is the winter triangle that we're measuring. I'll try and get it as accurate as I can. It's around about just under 15. Now I'm just thinking, you know, for argument's sake, would we agree that that was 14.4? Uh, you know, guys, I don't believe that this pyramid was just built. Uh, for any other other reason than to uh, give us information, information that was important about a time, perhaps which we would come to understand it a bit better. Oh, oh first of all, uh, I've, been, I've been messing around with a few things. I wanted to know what um, you know four percent of three hundred and sixty actually looked like, and you can see there that there is more than one uh, proportion of four percent, or you know what would be 14.4% of 360 degrees. And you can see that the three there that I've put there, there there's a reason why I, I did this. First one is, is that I measured the angle of uh, from the centre to the edge uh, of the 4%, 3, 4%. Why did I use that? The reason why I used that is because if we look at where the... Uh, King's chamber is from the centre.